Inside linebacker Kevin Reddick, uh, who's probably expected to go first or second in, in terms of linebackers into the next year's NFL draft. Sylvester Williams, same thing at the defensive tackle position. The Louisville offensive line is going to have its hands full with this front seven of North Carolina, and the Louisville defensive line is going to have its hands full with the North Carolina offensive line. I think a lot of people I've seen this game as a high-scoring affair. I don't see it that way. I see it as low-scoring. I see it, you know, as a defensive battle, and uh, the difference to, for me is going to be Teddy Bridgewater. I look at Teddy, uh, you know, last couple of games. North Carolina's pass defense is a little suspect, but if they pressure, they get if they get in there, this could be a long game. Watching, uh, watching North Carolina get off the bus uh, looks like they uh, looks like they're in good spirits. Doesn't look like anything out of the ordinary. Just walking in the locker room at this point. Larry Fedora is leading his uh, people in right here, at gate two. At Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, the band's going to follow him in. At the same time, I imagine Green Lot, you know, this is around the time card marches. I cannot see the card march. Hopefully they're there now or they are going to be there any minute. Uh, man, I can't wait. I mean, this is an absolute perfect day for football. If you can't get excited about today like today, then you don't have a pulse. And I think even Weekend at Bernie's just kind of walked by. I think he's even excited. Uh, so, you know, Bren Renner, he, he – Coming off a huge year uh, last season, uh, led the ACC in passing. He's junior quarterback. He was injured last week, did not look good after his injury, and I think the Louisville Cardinals are going to come after him. They're going to give him some hits, and we're going to see how he responds because this is going to be a tough physical football game, especially when you consider that the ACC has extended an invitation and been accepted to membership from Notre Dame. The ACC's dismantling of the Big East has continued this week, and it just so happens that the Louisville Cardinals are facing an ACC team this week in North Carolina. North Carolina is on probation this year and are not eligible to get ranked. They're coming off a, a really tough loss on the road to Wake Forest last week by one point, a game where they gave up a lot of yards. Wake Forest is not known as a passing team, and they gave up quite a few yards in the air, but it was still a low-scoring affair. Uh, as, as you get closer to the, to the goal line, North Carolina's defense it really tightens up. I think we're going to see some field goals. I think we're going to see some, you know, and, and it's really going to be important in this game for teams to get points. If you get close to the, you know, 25-yard line inside the red zone, if you get to the fourth down, teams are going to take those points. And North Carolina has an outstanding field goal kicker. He's actually their all-time leading field goal kicker in school history. And he's actually, he actually beat his brother's record, and I'm struggling to think of his name right now. We don't have internet here at the, uh, at the thing, so I'm doing this all off the top of my head. Uh, Tyler Bloyd will be joining me here in a couple of minutes. They just had an outstanding eating competition at Cardinal Hall of Fame Cafe, sponsored by Penn Station. And, uh, you know, it sounded like it was incredible. They, he's going to come back, and I'm going to be surprised if he has a voice. There's a lot of students up there, a lot of fraternities, and the energy on the, on the radio for that. 15-minute segment was amazing, uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Now, back to the game. This I fully expect with the news out of the ACC. Louisville fans, two two weeks in a row, have really have sold out the stadium. Last week, there was attendance was a little light. There was 7,447 no shows, but but it was sold out uh, uh, stadium. I'm looking forward to this year to this week having 55,000 people in here, every single ticket allocated and used. And, uh, you know, with the news out of the ACC, they keep on coming on with the Big East, and, you know, we're <laughs> and here we go with another ACC team. I think that North Carolina is in for it today. I think that last year's loss, 14-7, to you had Jamon Brown come over from the defensive tackle position to start at left guard for John Miller. You had uh, Cameron Joyer go out. You had Hector Hernandez at left tackle. That – that's not going to happen today. Louisville football is going to get the offense going early and often. You won't see Dominic Brown today, and you may not see him for a couple more weeks. I think right now the strength and conditioning staff is hoping for Southern Miss, and if it's not Southern Miss, he should be definitely back by the Big East opener, Pittsburgh. Uh, so, you know, today we're really looking at a, at a huge opportunity for the University of Louisville to start 3-0 and for the first time since 2006. Uh, they're going to come out here and uh, – Perfect conditions. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, everybody's healthy on offense except for Dominic Brown. Everybody's healthy on defense. To our knowledge, Keith Brown's hamstring injury seems to be 
uh, healed, and we, we expect to see him today. Uh, probably for the most extensive action that, that we have been able to see him. But George Durant in his place has been playing amazing football. And, you know, for me, the keys for the Louisville defense is going to be can they stop the run? Can they stop North Carolina's run game? And they got a lot of help because Giovanni Bernard didn't get on the team playing, and they left him in Chapel Hill. So we're really looking to see, you know, how uh, their backup running backs, A.J. Blue, and I can't remember the other guy's name, but he's a shifty back, a 6'1", 180-pounder. Uh, guy likes to get on the outside. Perfect for the zone read. Now, if Bryn Renner does get hurt or has lingering effects from his concussion last week, they have a redshirt freshman, Marquise Williams, who is actually perfect for Larry Fedora's offense. And Bryn Renner is more of a pocket passer. He's not really made for this. And, uh, you know, that that's kind of a worry to see a guy like Marquise Williams come into the game and actually, he probably would perform better, in my personal opinion. And and I and I've talked to people this week about what they feel about this game, and uh, I kind of liken it to when Rich Rodriguez came to uh, Michigan and tried to change up their offense to a similar um, offensive style, offensive philosophy. It was a, at Michigan before. It was a lot of power football, line up, knock the guy off his block. North Carolina was that team last year. Larry Fedora brings in a different style of football. This is a spread offense, zone read, a lot of stuff like that. And I honestly think that the, the football team is not made to be that yet. I think Larry Fedora is an outstanding football coach. And uh, Matt McCarthy and Tyler Bloyd just showing up. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Uh, so how, how did the uh, how did the eating contest go over there, Tyler? The eating contest went great. I don't know if you can hear me. Am I on? Am I on? Yeah, you're on. I'm on. I'm on. Yeah, the eating contest was fun, Mark. It was over there in the, the tailgaters lot of the uh, old Cardinal Stadium. We, me and you have had our days over there in the tailgates. Absolutely. We absolutely. We had Jeremy from uh, SAE take it home. He's I heard. We listened. Did you? Adam and I were. Did you hear anything? Yes, it was awesome. It was packed. Bacon almost passed out doing the uh, commutation of it. Well, yes, yeah, somebody. It was that Bacon that was doing that. Yeah, we Bacon were trying was to figure screaming. out. He's the secretariat of eating competitions. I couldn't hear him. I was on one end of the table. He was on the other. <laughs> couldn't hear. You gotta hear. You I gotta heard you go back great and listen commentary, to him. Commentary, Bacon. You gotta go. He's the secretariat of eating competitions. He's running away. <laughs> That was awesome. That was awesome. I couldn't believe it. I can't believe that was bacon. He said it, was it sounded great, bacon. It sounded amazing. Kind of screaming a little bit. Lost my voice slightly. Yeah, we we heard you lose your voice, but uh, you know, thanks a lot to Penn Station for putting that how's, on for how, us. Mark, how's the crowd been up here? I've, the, I see the UNC band getting off the buses. The, the band just got off the, the bus. The band is on the field. But the football team was right in front of them. Uh, okay. So the football team is in the locker room for, for North Carolina. I could not see card march. Uh, the the we've had quite a few North Carolina fans walk. Walk by uh, the, our, where we are here on Floyd Street, right in, right behind Shack in the back at the front, basically, or our east side of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Come out and see us or give us a call, 384-1450. We'd love to hear from you while you're at your tailgates or driving into the game. Uh, how did the first segment go, Mark? I listened. You first, s- it sounded great. Yeah, man. You know, I'm not used to doing the solo thing, but I think I did okay. I'm, I'm better at playing off your questions. Uh, obviously, I didn't hear everything you got to. <laughs> We're going to break down the game. And whatnot. I got to talk a little bit about Bacon about this one. Obviously, a big news from today. Uh, North Carolina's running back, uh, Giovanni Bernard, is not in attendance today, Mark. He is not in attendance, and uh, I said that in the opening statement. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's huge. You know, North Carolina uses three backs. He's the most important all purpose back that they have. He would take 20 to 25 carries. He got hurt in the Elon game, their opener. He only mm-hmm. took nine carries. And North Carolina fans haven't seen him, and, and they. they you know, it's frustrating talking to North Carolina fans this week. Uh, you know, the no injury reporting policy that Larry Fedora and his staff have employed, it's really frustrating because, you know, they said Giovanni Bernard's practicing. He's fine, first unit. He's good, good to go. And then all of a sudden he's not on the team. Not playing. even on the team playing. Yeah. That's positive, though, as a card fan that you are and all the card fans out there listening. He's a stud. He, uh, Him, Marcus Lattimore across the nation, uh, the guy who just left Penn State for USC, well, his name skips my mind. Silas Red. Silas Red. They're one of the top running backs in the nation, so that's always good for Louisville. Yeah. Uh, Wake Forest. Uh, Wake Forest. North Carolina is obviously coming off a loss mark to Wake Forest last week. I did get to watch the uh, whole fourth and quarter, most of the third. I got a little scouting report on your uh, North Carolina Tar Heels that you're facing today. We, All right, let's we'll, hear that. Oh, we, we'll, let's, we'll break that. Have you had a break yet? We haven't had a break. What, uh, Douglas, let's go ahead and get to that first break. We'll come back and start breaking down these games. If you want to give us a shout, 384-1450, the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln 
and Buzz Line. Of course, we're out here uh, outside of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, 2801 South Floyd Street. Come out and say, hey, we got Shaq in the back barbecue. Uh, we got the guys out here selling the T-shirts. I'll get uh, get him on here in a little bit. Uh, this is the weekend sports buzz. Huh? How much time? About a minute. I wish this document would pull up. We don't need no stinking document. We need to know the guest name. That's true. <laughs> hey, you. Hey, we got a guy on here from Rivals. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> we had it written down, but it blew away in the wind. Hey, it's disc It's connected to 3G, it says. Now back to the weekend sports buzz. Tell us your thoughts on the Oxmoor Fort Lincoln Buzz Line at 384 1450. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. We're back here at the weekend sports buzz outside of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium live for the North Carolina Louisville game. North Carolina's in town. Cards looking to go 3-0 and this week, Mark. Myself, obviously, Tyler Boyd, Mark Blankenbaker every Saturday. Time slot's a little different this week, but we're doing the pregame, so it's better that way. Special edition special weekend e sports buzz. Special edition. Pregame Louisville and Kentucky today. Mark, you weren't here last week. I kind of missed you. 
Yeah, I miss you too. I was at a wedding. Weeks. I was at a wedding. It was terrible because I was in a place where they literally had no, no technology. No. Where were you? Gary, uh, Indiana. Uh, Rough River Dam. There's nothing it, there besides the, like, which is a great river. Yeah, if you were going to stage an invasion, no one would see you there because, like, there's literally no comps. I couldn't get a tweet out. I couldn't get a text message. When Mark I can't get a phone tweet, call. the world comes to an end. It was this bad. Guy's got a tweet. And if, if you can follow tweet. him, it's like a, it's like a. It's like an itch. It's I got a itch. scratch. At cards and cats com, right? At, at cards and cats com is our home account, and I'm at U of L Sheriff fifty dot, um, at Twitter. So you can check me out there, and I'm going to be tweeting on the house account tonight for Ooh. for cards and cats dot com. You'll be in there with on. me, right? We'll get to hang out together for a little. Are bit. you going in? I am going. Okay, in good. Got to pass. Good, I good, am. good. Looks like Bacon is taking full advantage of Shack in the back barbecue right now. Ba- Bacon's been very hungry. He had breakfast around eleven. It is now one thirty. He's definitely hungry, Grant. Thanks to Shaq in the back barbecue for coming out here. They have great meals. I'm going to get me a, a little sandwich out there, and of course, right in front of us, Stewart's Pawn Shop out here selling uh, Cardinal gear, uh, Cardinal stickers, car magnets, license plates, sandals. You, you name it, they have it. They got the pink for the women. They just they just had a whole eating contest, and Bacon's already back. Yeah, he's we just already the, back at it. Just left the Penn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just left the Penn Station eating contest. SAE, Jeremy took it home. Uh, thanks to Penn Station. That was a fun event. Me and Bacon were out there taking that one, getting you home through that if you listened in. I'm worn out, guys, from the eating contest. You look I'm worn not going to lie. I, I think I used more energy calling that event than they did eating the sandwiches. I think you did, too. It was did a it great sound call. okay on the radio? It sounded amazing. Good, Mark, good. I, you're going to want to listen to the playback. I'm going to have to listen to that. I want to thank, thank you, Shaq in the back, though, for furnishing some food and some beverages for me while I'm out here. Before too. you pass <laughs> out. Before I pass out, yes. Yes, yes it is. We're going to get it. you some AC. Bacon, <laughs> keep that mic real quick. Okay. We didn't get to it over there at the uh, tailgate lot. We had the show going on with the Penn Station, obviously. I didn't get a score prediction from you. Can I get a quick score prediction from you? I said it's going to be a lot like the beef with Brady Bowl and Fedora met Charlie Strong. When he was with Southern Miss, I think Louisville will win again today like they did at that point in time. Final score today, Louisville 27, North Carolina 14. 27-14 nice. from our man, Bacon Trevor Kelsey, their little prediction. We'll, I'll, I'll be, we will all be in there, so uh, we'll keep on that prediction. Mark? This game, uh, I asked Bacon the same question. I'll ask you the same thing. Is this the biggest one of the season, or are you looking maybe down the road? Obviously, to today. It's always, this this every is the biggest week, game so every far. Every week is the biggest game, right. no matter who you play. But get past today. Do you, is it Cincinnati? Is it Rutgers for that last game well, on the road again? Right now you're looking at Cincinnati and Rutgers as the biggest game of the season for BCS bowl implications. But it's, in terms of out-of-conference, yes, this is absolutely the, the, the best game on the schedule for for Louisville at home, out of conference. It's a beautiful day. It's an ACC opponent who's just come in and raided your conference yet again with Notre Dame. Their storylines galore. I love it. North Carolina's got a, a fraudulent American, uh, African-American studies program over there that athletes have been taking Is advantage of. Is that even a of. class? The NCAA is investigating. If Western Kentucky offered that, I might have graduated. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Bacon <laughs> chiming in with his intelligence. And uh, and then, you know, you also have to – and also in the news, Tyler Hansborough's mom just got in trouble for taking she, money from the – She resigned a day after all this came right. out. That's not weird. It, oh, that's they try to say they did weird. not do anything, Mark, I, I would say – I'm going to resign, but I didn't do anything. Exactly. It, um, North Carolina has been dirty for a long time, and we're finally figuring it out. The ACC is going to get a beatdown today from the Louisville Cardinals, and Teddy Bridgewater is going to be the man delivering. So, you, most is of Teddy it. T- your MVP of today's game, yes. or maybe a Jeremy Wright? Uh, uh, I, I see. Uh, I see a lot of passing coming today from uh, Louisville yes. Cardinals because Louisville Wake uh, Forest. W- it was a field day against Louisville uh, against North Carolina last week. It's not smart if you're Louisville to try to bang the ball in in between the tackles against North Carolina. That's where they're strong. They have mm-hmm. extremely good defensive tackles and an extremely good linebacker in Kevin Rev- Reddick. It makes sense. Air the ball out, just like Kentucky did against Louisville. Um, if if you know that you're not going to run, if you know you're not going to run the ball, why run the ball? Yeah, don't a, waste your downs. Exactly, it is. So. Uh, kickoff is set for 3:30 p.m. today. We will be taking you to the three o'clock hour. Then we'll be heading into the stadium. Uh, guests today, we got a couple good ones lined up from if both of them from Rivals.com at the 145 hour. We'll talk to Jordan Wells. He is the WKU Rivals guy. We're going to break down a little Kentucky Western. That game is tonight, uh, seven o'clock. Commonwealth, seven o'clock. ESPNU. ESPNU. Uh, and then as well here's the second hour, 2:15 before Mark gets out of here. Adam Powell. He is the Tar Hill Illustrated.com Rivals.com. Uh, blogger, their number one guy, so we'll talk to him. 
to get his his North Carolina input of this game. It's always good to bring in an opposing guy that's not in your state, not me being a Kentucky guy trying to talk about your cars. Right, you know, and you know, you talked about already about Giovanni Bernard not being in there, but you also got Jerrain Boyd also didn't come make the trip either, you know, and he's a outstanding he wide, wide out? receiver. That yes. He's a kick returner, punt returner, wide receiver, big play guy, and they haven't had him at all this year. Um, North Carolina's secondary is not good. I wanted to ask him about that. I mean, Tim Scott does have three interceptions, but outside of him, uh, you know, you can you can avoid his side of the field. And I think that's what Louisville's going to do today. They're going to avoid Tim Scott. They're going to avoid Kevin Reddick. They're going to avoid Sylvester Williams, and they're just going to pick so their They're spots. just going to avoid all 11 defenders. They're no, just going to come out there and play the ghost. we got some North Carolina fans walking in out here. They're excited about the game. 85? What's the name? Ibram for USC. Gotcha. All right, 85. We'll, we'll, we'll be watching for sure. Uh, North Carolina fans, look at that. Yeah. We, we had a, last week we had a Gator fan step in. He was wearing his Gator shirt. Uh, that was kind of casual. But North Carolina fan coming in, Mark, right through the tailgate. Hard right pool. through the tailgate. And before you got here, there was a North Carolina uh, uh, group of fans actually waving a North Carolina flag flamboyant. So they ready for this game. Yes. Fan I, base seems qu- quite confident coming into Louisville off a, a loss to Wake Forest. Lost That's the Wake awful. Forest. One game. Our one point game, uh, you know, and uh, did you see the shot that Brendan Rare took last last week? I did not. To the head. It, it happened in the second quarter, right at the goal line. Wake Forest stuck him, and, and the SB Nation had a had a huge article on this. And basically, Brendan Renner got hit. He stood up and then collapsed. Obvious concussion. Went to the ground. Then ended up going back into the game. So played ass- the rest of the game, and he didn't look very good during that game. I'm assuming he w- – is he in today? Is he playing today? He's the ga- yeah, and they, they're calling it a rib injury. But, okay. it, you know, I don't rib know Rib injury any- doesn't make you pass – I mean, I guess it could maybe no. the pain, the excruciating pain, but – Your ribs aren't ooh. located on your head. We know that. So, like, if you're going to have a rib injury, you're going to have to be hit in the ribs – uh, Larry Fedora. So we're going to have to ask Larry uh, about that and player safety. Yeah, we'll uh, get Larry over here. We'll bring him on. Over. <laughs> no, I'm going to ask him after the game. <laughs> He's a sure. football coach, not a uh, doctor, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't so have doctors to be a doctor on the to field, know. Bacon. You got doctors all up and down your, you know, your, your They graduated from UNC taking their study <laughs> 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 classes. They didn't take classes. I see what you're going with. Studies class that apparently it's only for athletes, which is amazing. And one interesting note today is that C.L. Brown. Is uh, the who, who's the Courier Journal beat writer for uh, Louisville? He actually went to North Carolina. He's a North Carolina grab as a product of the African American Studies Maybe program. Maybe we should That's talk to him about these classes. I did talk yeah. to him, and he uh, said uh, if if the classes were like that when he was there, he would have been able to graduate a lot sooner. I mean, I'm sure he was there for what eight <laughs> years, maybe even longer. <laughs> yeah, seven, eight who years. Knows, who knows? Who knows? Brown's a great guy. He was like Van Wilder when he was in college. It took him forever. Mark, you were like Van Wilder when you were in college, weren't you? Yeah, you know, I still I still sign up for a class every now and then. Oh, that's what I thought. Uh, before we do get to this break, we'll come up to it because we do have our guest coming up we want to get to him uh bacon 1978 did you know muhammad ali was uh, won his first heavyweight title 1978 he's not muhammad ali didn't win his first well, ali beats leon speaks for 15th sorry i don't I know why i said say, first. he lost 15th. to trevor burbick in 1980 i believe so i don't think he won his first in 78 yeah i didn't mean to say first <laughs> i saw i read the wrong line 15th uh, it, title and i can believe that Louisville was the only 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 city in america that has four i think three excuse me three Different heavyweight champions. Yeah, right. I, I think we're about to have four because my man Earl Heyman, yep. who we like to bring in. Earl's studio, coming. He is coming for you, former Cardinal himself. So watch uh, out, Klitschko. He's coming for he, you. Buddy. He is. He actually said that he's going to knock Klitschko out. So that'd be awesome. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get to that last break. Uh, we are out here outside of Papa John's with Shack in the Back Barbecue, Stewart's Pawn Shop, selling some great Louisville gear, selling some great barbecue up in front of us. I'm going to have to get some. Mark, uh, we'll be right back. It's weekend Sports Buzz. Awesome.
pointed during our... Welcome back to the Weekend Sports Buzz. Give us a call on the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln Buzz Line at 384-1450. We're back here at the Weekend Sports Buzz, live outside of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, right out beside the 80, for 80 under 80 building mark. And so we're having a good time. The crowd's out. I see some North Carolina jerseys, plenty of Cardinal red out here. Obviously, Louisville is taking on North Carolina today. Uh, we we're going to talk to our uh, rivals guy here in the second hour about that game. But first, Mark, my favorite team, the Cats. We're going to talk, talk a little bit. Do yeah, we have yeah. to? We have to. Do we, we have to? We have to. Okay, let's do it. Otherwise, anyway. I wouldn't do the show. Let's talk about Western. Can we talk about Western well, We instead? can do that as well because we got our man, Jordan Wells. He is the WKURivals.com writer. Jordan, what's going on today, man? <laughs> hey, how's it going, guys? I'm on my way to Lexington. It's a beautiful day today. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. Well, obviously, we're out here in Louisville. It's sunny and bright here. I'm assuming it's the same thing in Lexington. Are you excited for today's game? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to be a lot closer than a, a lot of people feel. Um, you know, this, I know the spread is seven, um, but WKU's beaten the spread 11 straight games by an average of 11 points. So if averages played out, that would put Western at four. So I, I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. Yeah, and you know, uh, last week, um, all, uh, they, the Hilltoppers, they played Alabama. Yeah. They were not held to a three and out once against the Crimson 14 Tide. 14 first downs. 14 first downs. I, I, and a lot of experts this, this week have picked the toppers They're to not beat the, well, the Wildcats. They're not experts. Well, you know, what do you think about that? You know, that, that you know, I'm not surprised that a few guys have picks. Obviously, Western to win. Western's coming in this game with a lot of returning guys. Jordan, it, it, and off the top of your head, you might know the exact number. How many returners does the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, maybe defense, offense have? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? It's hard to hear you on the road. I was saying, how many returners does uh, this Western Kentucky starting uh, rotation have? They've got a lot of starters returning um, on defense and offense. Uh, on defense, the guys are, are really sticking out right now is Andrew Jackson. Uh, he's a middle linebacker, top five middle linebacker in the country, according to Mel Kuyper from ESPN. Um, and then Quintana Smith is one of the best pass rushers in the country. He had three sacks against Alabama. Then they have a four-star safety in Jonathan Dowling, who transferred from the University of Florida. And uh, he set out last year for NCAA rules, and, and he's uh, finally been able to take the field. And then on offense, they've got uh, K1 Jason back for another year. Um, he's a fifth-year senior. And then running backs, they've got Antonio Andrews and a true freshman, Leon Allen, that's really been standing out so far. Now, if I'm correct, uh, Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Andrew Jackson is actually the guy who said they're supposed to be SEC last year. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, he did. That was it was pretty funny. Um, I, I was actually at the game, so I didn't get to see the line until I got home um, and hear about it. And it was all over the internet by then. But uh, yeah, the, the ESPN cameras they just kind of stuck up on the sidelines, you know. And it wasn't one of those uh, mid-game trash talks, which is what I think made it so funny. You know, it wasn't like the microphones picked it up on the field. Um, Jackson was just sitting on the bench. And just kind of started shaking his head, talking to his teammates, and he was like, "They're supposed to be SEC, man, or they're not." And that's kind of uh, why I think it took off so much. So I'm sure the Kentucky players uh, remember that from last year. You know, I, I'm sure that they, they, he's got a target on his back uh, going into this game. They actually didn't allow him to speak to media this week, which is probably a good thing for yeah. a WKU standpoint because there's no telling what might have happened. So. <laughs> Well, we have uh, Jordan Wells here with Rivals.com, Western Kentucky website. Uh, Jordan, today uh, a lot of people have picked uh, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers to defeat Kentucky. What are your keys to the game to, for them to pull that off? Well, I think the biggest key to the game is going to be WKU has a pro-style motion offense. It's not like the spread that a lot of teams are trying to run in college football now. It's more of a pro-style physical offense that's methodical. They're going to three yards, five yards, three yards, eight yards. The key will be that motion versus UK's young linebackers. Um, and their linebackers are very young, and it, it'll be confusing for them to have Jack Doyle, Western's tight end, move over to the other side of the formation, and if they get their rotations mixed up, 
he might be wide open, and so could some of their receivers. Um, and then the other, on the other side of the ball, um, they're going to they're gonna have to limit the turnovers. That's what killed them against Alabama. They've got to hold on to the ball. Um, with that methodical offense, it's great. They're able to do what they want to do in terms of moving the ball up and down the field, but it's not a quick-scoring offense like you can get with the spread. So what happens is if they, if they move the ball 50 yards and then they turn it over, then they're not going to get the ball again for a long period of time. So um, it's very important they've got to hold on to the ball and, and try to take advantage of that heavy motion. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, the quarterback for Western, uh, if I'm wrong, pronounce it, we changed my pronunciation. Kawan Jakes, Kawan Jakes? K1. K1 uh, Jakes. K1 Jakes. I know he is a senior. He is a proven uh, quarterback. You know, is it? are you expecting a big day out of him, considering the Kentucky defense, especially the secondary, is not up to par? Yeah. Well, I, I still think, you know, he's thrown a lot more passes this year than I think people were originally expecting. I mean, he's been a lot more accurate than people were expecting. He's still not a guy that can take a shot deep downfield, but in terms of hitting tight ends and running backs, he's getting a lot better at that, which was something he honestly struggled with last year. Um, I, I still think you're going to see a lot of UK running up the, I'm sorry, Western running up the middle um, against Kentucky's 3-4 defense because, you know, that's, that's one of the weaknesses of the 3-4 defense is uh, holds up the middle. Uh, I, I do think you'll see him with some tight end dump offs, like I said, depending on how UK reacts to Western uh, motion. But his main thing is just, like I said, they can't turn the ball over. Can't throw picks, um, can't can't fumble the ball, can't do any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Jordan Wells uh, from Rivals.com, Western Kentucky's beat writer. I uh, appreciate you taking a few minutes. Jordan, I can't let you go, though, without getting a score prediction from yourself. I've had some uh, Kentucky predictions. Obviously, they're all taking the cats. Are you going with the other route? Yeah, you know, I'm sticking my neck out a little bit. I know a, a lot of people, it's it's um, it, it's hard to imagine a school like WKU, that's the Sunbelt School, going into an SEC school and winning. Um, but, you know, I, I've always I try to do the blank resume like you see with the NCAA tournament. If you sat down and removed the Kentucky and SEC label and then removed the WKU Sunbelt label and you compare the two rosters, uh, they're honestly equal. If not, Western's a little bit better. So um, I'm actually... Predicting, I've, I've said this since Monday, I'm, I'm predicting WKU 21, uh, Kentucky 17. It could go either way. I mean, Kentucky has had a great passing offense this year, and Alabama was able to light up uh, WKU from the past. So, you know, I, I could see it going the other way, but I could honestly see Western coming in here and blowing UK out, too. I know that that's wow. out there, but this is a really talented team. Uh, that people just are underestimating because they're from the Sunbelt Conference. So, um, you know, I, I'm sticking with 21-17, but honestly, I would not be surprised to see it go either way today. There you go, Jordan. We'll appreciate you taking a few minutes on your ride to Lexington. I hope it's a good one. Uh, the game tonight is going to be fun, so enjoy yourself, and we'll be talking to you down the road. Yeah, sounds good, man. Have me on any time. Thanks. Awesome. Jordan Wells, WKU Rivals. And you know what? He made a good point. You know, you don't play the game uh, by, with the name on the front of the jersey or by all the one on the behind. It's about the bodies inside the pads, and that's what wins football games. You know, Western Kentucky's got a lot going on. You know, like their last three losses have been to Alabama, LSU, and Alabama. You know, so, tough. <laughs> so when you think about it, like, you know, Western's been playing some really good football, and Willie Taggart, if, if things don't go well today – this could be a job interview for him. It could be. You know what I mean? Like, this could be a legit job interview for Willie Taggart, who came up from Stanford as a running backs coach to, to be the head coach at his alma mater. But, you know, I, I think at this point Willie Taggart might say, hey, look, you know, I got it rolling here. Why do I need to go to Kentucky or anywhere else? But, you know, uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, what, what's your score prediction? You know, uh, I'll give you my score prediction a little bit later. I'm, I like to tease that, as Bacon does as well. Uh, I put it on the KentuckySports.co on the pregame blog, and, of course, CardsAndCats.com goes there. John, My man John Hancock is staying inside us. I know he's anxious to get inside this building, so I do want to talk to him a little bit uh, real quick, get his standpoint. He is my uh, Cards rap writer on Kentucky Sports. I tell you, he's a gr- KentuckySports.co does a great job. John, you excited about today's game? I am pumped. Are I'm you? I'm pumped. I, last, last week, it seemed like card fans came in late. They weren't that excited. They are here. It was a hang- it was a hangover. You did play Missouri State last week. Well, That's yeah, a big change. Parking lots are already full. Yep. You know, I, I'm excited. I hate North Carolina blue. 
I just hate it. This is the worst color for athletics, isn't it? It's a girly color. It's a girly color. It makes it makes me feel like I'm in like a uh, maternity ward and like I should be like handing out diapers and cigars. Yeah, it's a boy. <laughs> it's a boy. There's a lot a of Carolina blue out here, though. If you noticed that, it really there, is. there has been. Well, there we're is. on the visitors' side of the stadium. Yeah, that is true. So this is where they're all going to gravitate. Everybody's towards. still tailgating. What we have, but they, they do travel well. And now we have a lot of kickoff. And they have a lot of fans around here. I know a lot of North Carolina fans in Kentucky. So unfortunately, yeah. and, and a lot of uh, North Carolina fans are a lot like Kentucky fans when you think about Except that we very basketballs. We are exa- fans of the class. Exactly. You know, there's no African American studies program where you can. I mean, just there, is. Slide. there is, but it's, but it's an actual class. right it's an where they actually have teachers class. and you know people. You have to show up and yeah. write papers, Tests. things like that. Exactly. So I'm excited about this game. I mean, it, you can't paint a better picture for what this scene actually looks like right now. Perfect weather. Clear blue skies. Football weather. You know, ACC, Big East, top 20, Teddy Bridgewater, ABC. You can leave out the Big East there. You know, I'm just saying. It's Big East versus ACC. Give me your prediction of today's game. You know, I know you like to throw out a name out there, your star of the game. Give me your star and then a little score prediction. Well, well, here's what – my star of the game is going to be Louisville's linebackers only because – and, Mark, you can uh, maybe give your opinion on this, but we have not blitzed our linebackers at all. In fact, no. we had one uh, safety blitz, Floyd versus Kentucky, and he got a sack. Mm-hmm. But other than that, we have not we have not rushed the passer with the linebackers. I think this week would be a perfect opportunity for a, a quarterback like Renner, who likes to to roll out and out of the pocket. You know, our fast linebackers will be able to to get him. And I, I think Charlie Strong has been holding off for this game, so mm-hmm. I I, I exactly. think that those will be the start of the game. I predict Preston Brown to be inside the middle, constantly. You know, which he has been in the flat a lot, you know, because the teams that we played, Kentucky and, and Missouri State, spread the ball out. But North Carolina likes to throw it in the middle. They so do. I think I think we're right. going to be okay uh, in that aspect. So I would say that, you know, Preston Brown is going to be the start of the game. What's today. the score for today, John? The score today is going to be 27-14. 27-14. Yeah, you know, cards. John hit on a point, you know, two, two uh, games so far for Louisville Cardinals. They played Kentucky, quick passing, three-step drop. Missouri State, same deal. North Carolina is a zone read team. They're going to do a lot of side-to-side stuff. There's going to be more time for Louisville defense to get into the backfield and make plays. They've been taken out of the game the past two times. They're ready to eat. They're hungry. They're ready to show that they are the strength of the Louisville football team, as Charlie Strong, Clint Hurt, and Vance Bedford have said all preseason. And uh, we're off to a break. Matt keeps telling me so, so we're going to Have fun there, that. John. Have fun. Yeah, have fun. Eat, eat well. Eat well. Uh, right. Again, 384-1450. Give us a shout out. The Oxmoor Ford Lincoln Buzz Line. Thanks to uh, Jack in the Back Barbecue and Stewart's Pawn Shop out here doing great stuff. A lot of Cardinals fans stop by, grab some food, grab some T-shirts, some hats. Uh, give us a shout. We'll be right back. This is the Weekend Sports Buzz.
We should do it right here every week, even if it's like snowing. Yeah. Oh, no. you do, oh wow. What'd you do? It yeah, didn't rain on our show. We're out for three weeks at this point. We might be going to Lexington. Game. Pittsburgh? I'm going to Pittsburgh. Game. We got a Ford and Ashley on Orlando next week. He is. Uh, yeah, it's Joel Schaefer. This is the Weekend Sports Buzz. Let us know what you think. Give us a call on the Oxmoor Fort Lincoln Buzz Line at 384-1450. We're back here at the Weekend Sports Buzz. Give us a shout, 384-1450. We'll get you all's predictions of this Louisville, North Carolina game. Kentucky's game taking on Western Kentucky later tonight at Commonwealth Stadium. Again, we are outside of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, 2801 South Floyd Street. Myself, Tyler Boyd, Mark Blankenbaker is always on your Saturday. Right out in front of us, Mark, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, the fans, fans are rolling in. The, the band is on the field. Uh, they're, they're heading out there. we got Shaq in the back barbecue. Uh, smells amazing, by the way. Smells amazing. It looks amazing. I can't wait to take a, you know get a, get a little sandwich over there. they got pulled pork, pulled chicken. They got ribeyes, they, anything you'd ask. And the same with Stewart's Pawn Shop right here. They got, I see some golf balls. Every single rings. piece of Cardinal gear you could possibly need. A card helmet? They even have a construction helmet. That's awesome. I might, if it was UK, I might purchase that. I might have to talk to him uh, behind hours. Still there. amazing. Behind hours. So, yeah, get out here, Stewart's Pawn Shop. There's even a guy here. over there selling tickets. So, if you haven't got your ticket yet, there's a guy over here with like Every three. Every corner, there's a guy attempting <laughs> to sell tickets. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 384 1450. <laughs> 1450. Uh, we just talked to Jordan Wells from Rivals.com, WKU. Got a little breakdown of uh, the, the western side of things. Uh, here at 215, in about 10 minutes, we'll talk to Adam Powell, TarHillIllustrated.com. He is from Rivals as well. Uh, come out say hey to us. Mark, uh, it's a fun day out here. I love college football Saturday. Uh, regardless, I am a Kentucky fan, but I, being out here, just being in the environment, is fine with me. It's an amazing atmosphere. You know, there's it's something about college football. It doesn't matter where you are. Who you're fan? Who you're a fan of? You can go to every, any kind of campus, and they could be playing, you know, Savannah State. It's going to be an amazing day, even if it's in the rain. Jeff Mason loves Michigan. He's a big Michigan right. fan. I think that's his favorite team. So he's probably who very they excited today? about today. Who do they have today? I don't know because no I'm idea. not a Michigan fan. Maybe well, Jeff Mason's listening. He can call and let us know. I just got an update about Florida State and playing Wake, right? Wake. Yep. and uh, Wake actually beat North Carolina last week, twenty-eight to seven. Wake right now trails Florida State, thirty-eight to zero. So they're so basically getting dominated. ACC is awful as I expected. Right, uh, Mark. I want to ask you while we do have a few minutes before we get on uh, the air of talking to our man from uh, Tar Heel Illustrated. Over the week, I know it's been talked about. I want to get your pinpoint. You're a, you're a conference type of guy. Notre Dame. They're heading out of the Big East. Heading to the ACC for all sports except for football, which is no surprise there. Independent football have been for years, and it's going to stay that way. If anybody thinks they're going to go to a conference for football, no, they won't. What are your thoughts to this? Is this look, overlooking Louisville again? No. I mean, think of it, they could have took Louisville and had a football team in there as well? Or no, what, what's th your thoughts? This isn't a case of uh, Louisville getting overlooked. It's a, it's a case of Notre Dame waiting, like wanting to pull the trigger and the ACC saying, let's not waste any time. Let's just accept it and announce it. This doesn't really change anything for the Big East and its negotiations because everything's about football, and Notre Dame didn't play football. And you know what? And if Notre Dame – you know, Notre Dame does play football, but they're going to remain an independent in the ACC. And in my opinion, their tradition is as rusty as their town. You know, like it's literally like if you wore diapers in the 80s, you don't know Notre Dame football because guess what? It's all in black and white. They can wear diapers so, in the 80s. You know, it's, it's just like, okay, Notre Dame, fine. <laughs> you know, people can keep on doing that. And Some the ACC the is just going to be – the, the ACC is going to be the next uh, conference to go and you know worship the ring of Notre Dame, which no longer, to me, has any appeal whatsoever. So you're really just looking this. Uh, I know you had some sense of tweets out. You seem kind of bitter there for the first you know 12 hours or so, though, Mark. No, it's just one of those things about Notre Dame. They never once went out of their way to help out the conference that they were affiliated with. Now they're going to play five ACC teams a year. Can you imagine what that would have done if Notre Dame would have agreed to play all of the um, Big East membership at least once in football mm -hmm. every three years like they're going to in the ACC? They wanted that would have been schedule. amazing. Well, the thing is is that they know that, okay, they're going to play Wake. They're going to play Duke. They're going to play Virginia. They're going to play Maryland. Uh, really? I mean, so all they ever played in the Big East was Pitt and Syracuse. 
and they played UConn once, and it was all about padding the schedule, scheduling around the myth. They will get to do that in the ACC again and maintain their traditional rivalries with, play, with people like Miami that they play every five or six years anyway. I just don't. I mean, I just don't Speaking see of it. a team who's struggling. Miami, right. they just got blasted on. But yeah, in my opinion, coming from the SEC, you know, side of things, Kentucky standpoint, I think it's not really a shot. I wouldn't call it a shot at Louisville. Just more in the line of why not look at Louisville? It seems that everybody's overlooking them. Look at I me, mean, Mark. We're out here. The fans love it. Uh, That's amazing. If it's football, basketball, steeplechase. Y'all love your steeplechase championship. Well, if anything else, though, Tyler, what it does is it moves the system again because it was stuck. Nothing was happening. The Big 12 was waiting on Notre Dame to make a decision. The Big 10 was waiting on Notre Dame to make a decision. The ACC was. Now the decision's made. Now it's time to start moving this ball again. We'll see if the Big 12 decides to expand. In my opinion, it's going to be BYU and Louisville. I think they're going to lock up BYU. They have very uh, advantageous third-tier rights for television uh, in the Big 12, as they do with the Longhorn Network and everybody else in the Big 12 signing with Fox Sports Net to get their own third-tier network going. Uh, the BYU already has their network. They're very bullish on that. They're not going to share that with anybody else. They will remain independent because of their mission as a uh, religious institution. So this is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be BYU-Louisville. I think it's going to be in the next two years. And if it does so, because it, if your boy Charlie's gone, uh, not to cut you off, let's go to the Oxford yeah. Ford Lincoln Buzz line. We got a caller, a long loyal listener. Carolina Steve, what's going on? Carolina. First of all, you gentlemen are discouraging the most beautiful color in the world. If God <laughs> was not a Carolina fan, then why sky Carolina blue? Oh, that's a good point, Carolina, but we're only going to disparage it for one week only, and that's because it's game week, buddy. It's, uh,. It's, it's a beautiful color. I'm looking forward to listening to the game today. Uh, hopefully, uh, my Tar Heels can pull it out. Uh, you're going to have the guy from Tar Heel Illustrated on. Yes. Could you please ask him about the specific kids from Carolina named Hope. Oh, Car- Carolina, you there? You your, say, phone, your phone broke up. Say there that a one bit. more time. Okay. Uh, the guy's name that I want you to ask about is Kareem Martin. Okay. Yes. I can do that for he's you. A, he's a defensive end, correct? Yeah, he is uh, a graduate of the high school I attended. Uh, I think it's going to be a good game today. Unfortunately, I'm going to be able to uh, watch it because when I get off work in about a little uh, an hour, I'm on my way to Salem to watch him run around and uh, – <laughs> Uh, at the Arco race up there, and uh, everybody enjoy the game today and everything. And I picked the Tar Heels 28 to 14. There you go, Carolina. We appreciate the call as always. Look at that, Mark. We got Bacon and John both going 27 14 cards. Now we got Carolina 28 14 Carolina. We got, you know, the score differential about the same. Uh, I'll let mine out a little bit later. I, I kind of got a little bit different thoughts to think. I got it lower. Favorable to Louisville. I got a little higher. I got it twenty one thirteen. I think this is gonna be a more defensive game. Twenty one thirteen. I've got it Louisville. actually uh, I got it at thirty three seventeen cards. Oh really? I think they're just that gonna would come be an out. Explosion. Wake Forest can uh, Wake Forest went all over beneath of this defense. I expect Louisville, much superior in my opinion, from watching North Carolina play that game, could do the same and more. Um, I know we're up against this break. I know we're gonna talk about our man talk to our man. Adam Powell from Tar Heel Illustrated.com. So we will go ahead and get to the break. We'll call him, get him on. We'll ask that Kareem Rogers question from my man, Carolina Mark. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful day out here outside of Papa John's, uh, 2801 South Floyd Street. Come say hi. We'll give you a bacon, we'll give you a handshake. We got some beer koozies or, or adult beverages koozies, if you want to put it that way. Uh, check in the back barbecue, dishing out some great, play, great plates. And of course, Stewart's Pawn Shop. This is the Weekend Sports Buzz. We'll be right back.
refills? No. Oh, shit. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's like going. More out of it, you can actually get a limit. You're listening to the Weekend Sports Buzz. Call in on the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln Buzz Line at 384 1450. We're back here at the Weekend Sports Buzz, live. Myself, Tyler Boyd, Mark Blankenbaker, outside of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium for the Get prepared here for the Louisville North Carolina kickoff. We're about an hour, hour fifteen away. Uh, the fan base market's out here in full force. I expect a full, full crowd. Maybe a record of attendance. I mean, it's packed. Yeah, and you got a beautiful day for it, so there's no excuse not to come. You got a top level opponent from the ACC in North Carolina. Great name recognition. Good football team. Yeah, there's no excuse to not have a at least fifty. 53 plus. It'll be, yeah, I'm assuming it'll definitely be around that number. Anyways, let's get to the Oxmoor Ford Lincoln buzz line. We got another man on the line. Who knows a little bit something about North Carolina. Adam Powell <laughs> from TarHillIllustrated.com. Adam, what's up, man? Hey, how you guys doing? Doing fantastic. About to go into the stadium and uh, and and see if uh, Giovanni Bernard truly did not make the trip. Yeah, Bernard did not make the trip. Found out yesterday afternoon that uh, he was not going to make it. A little bit of a Surprise, you know, kind of got some uh, mixed signals from, from Larry Spore this week that he may be playing, kind of got indications that he was progressing. He, you know, was seen in practice, you know, during the week. Was, we were told he got full reps in practice. So as of yesterday afternoon, you know, it was kind of leaning, at least we thought that he was going to play, but then kind of the bombshell yesterday afternoon found out that he didn't even make the trip. So UNC was able to get around it. Last week against Wake Forest, uh, AJ Blue, junior, very um, you know seasoned, kind of a leader in that group of running backs, really kind of took the bull by the horns last week. You know the running game did not lose the game last week at Wake Forest. Um, if they can get another hundred yard out from him, I think they'll be fine. You know, and you know the key for Carolina is going to be to try to you know again extend the chains, keep the offense on the field. Uh, but, but you know, certainly with Bernard, you lose that, that game breaker, a guy with the moves and the speed to really take you to the house any time you put the ball in his hands. I mean, he's got that kind of game-breaking ability. So without him on the field, obviously the Tar Heels are, are that much less capable than they could be. Absolutely. You know, Giovanni Bernard's absolutely he's your all-purpose back. Uh, you will be without him today. Last week, though, uh, your quarterback, Bren Renner, took a nice shot at the goal line against Wake, Wake Forest, and it appeared that he had a concussion, but it looked like uh, in the post game and in the, in the upcoming press conference that, that they said it was a rib injury. Can you can you kind of expound on that a little bit? Yeah, again, you know, kind of mixed signals from, from the coaching staff. They talked about after the game that there had been, you know, he had had the wind knocked out of him and that it was more a rib injury, but you could clearly see on the film he kind of banged his head and then he kind of got up a little bit. And then he just fell right back down as if he had not, not necessarily been knocked unconscious, but was not pretty woozy. Now, they came back on Monday, and, and Ritter told the media at the weekly press conference that he had had two concussion tests prior to going back in the game last week. Now, that was not indicated immediately after the game. There was no uh, discussion about concussion tests or any type of uh, you know head examination before bringing him back in the game. So, again... It's kind of an example where we're kind of, you know, I guess part of with a first-year head coach and kind of his new policy on talking about injuries and, and how that relates to the, to the players. You know, the media in North Carolina is still kind of getting to know Coach Fedora in season in that regard. Very secretive about injuries, not really willing to kind of give us the full story. So we're kind of left with this kind of, well, what really is going on thing? It, you know, not to lie, it's a little bit annoying to see the local media, but you know, just kind of working around it. But, I mean, you know, it was pretty clear to everybody that, that saw the game either there or on television that he, that Ritter took a head shot of some kind. Now, I don't think they would have put him back in the ball game if he had a concussion. I think he clearly passed whatever test there that they took. Was he as capable a quarterback after the injury? Most definitely not. I mean, UNC was really steamrolling Wake Forest offensively before he went down. 
and he, he just wasn't the same quarterback after that injury. I mean, UNC didn't score another touchdown. So I think today is going to be really important for Renner in terms of kind of squashing this thing. If he goes out and plays well today, I think a lot of that you know whole deal, what's wrong, is his head hurt, did he, did he get a concussion after all? I think a lot of that talk will kind of go away. But if he struggles today, and certainly he struggled last year against Louisville, this is a very fast, aggressive defense. I think a lot of those questions are just still linger, but but certainly here in North Carolina, it's been been kind of a kind of frustrating thing for the fans and media alike to know exactly what is going on with Renner. Yeah, you know, I talked to several different North Carolina fans uh, this week leading up to the game, and, and several of them mentioned the injury reporting policy that the coaching staff has. It's very secretive, and, you know, I have a lot of respect for Larry Fedora for the job that he did at Southern Miss, and also I was at school when he was the offensive coordinator at Middle Tennessee. Uh, so I have a lot of respect for him, so I cannot imagine that he would put Brent Renner in the game knowing that he possibly had a head, head injury. Uh, but, you know, the keys of the game for me today are, are like every game, uh, offensive and defensive line. You know, Sylvester Williams going against the, the interior defensive line of Louisville that has two sophomores. And then on the other side, two Outland Trophy candidates on UNC's offensive line against Louisville's defensive line that really hasn't had a chance to really show what they have this week. Uh, give, me your, give me your keys and uh, what you're looking for in this game. Well, I think a few of the keys. I mean, we mentioned Renner. I think he's obviously going to be really important. I think for North Carolina, defensively, a big key in this game is going to be to compensate in their secondary and with the Ram position, which is kind of, I guess you'd call it a nickel back in a traditional 4-3 defense. In this 4-2-5, they have a player called the Ram, who, like I say, is more or less a fifth defensive back. A lot of blitzing against Wake Forest, particularly from, you know, the linebackers and, you know, various places, Wake Forest kind of took what UNC was giving them. They were, you know, finding the open spots where the blitzing player had been a few seconds before and just really killing Carolina because they couldn't get to the quarterback. So I think really the key for UNC today, um, can they get after Ted Bridgewater? Can they get in his face, make him uncomfortable? If he's able to sit back there and pick his spots like Tanner Price was able to do last week, it's going to be tough sledding for you to see. It's really going to be a challenge to uh, to slow down this Louisville offense um, if, if Bridgewater's sitting back there with time to throw. So I think that's probably the big key for UNC defensively. I think offensively, it's kind of a two-pronged thing. One, I think they still need to try to establish the run with A.J. Blue today. They've got another guy, Romar Morris. They're a good complement to each other. A.J. Blue is more of kind of the every down you know, grind it out back, throw more, more, more of a speed type guy. They can't get away from that if it's working. Now, obviously, if Louisville's shutting down the running game, they got to do something else. But last week, they were running the ball very well against Wake Forest, averaging over five yards to carry. And in the fourth quarter, they just seemed to get away from it. They mm-hmm. they kind of just, just got away from what had gotten them in position to win the game. So I think if UNC gets ahead today in the second half, keep running the football. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I think right now, you know, the way I look at this game, those are the two big keys. If UNC can sustain the running game and, and really handle those those uh, gaps in the secondary, if you will, I, I think they, they got a, a chance to make it a pretty good ball game. Right. You know, last year uh, Louisville finished number 10 in the nation uh, in run defense, so that will definitely be interested to see if if uh, the Tar Heels can actually run the ball on the Cardinals uh, today, uh, off the field stuff, we got uh, we got several different items to kind of discuss, and we'll just if you could touch on them, uh, Notre Dame joins the ACC. Tyler Hansborough's mom and this African American Studies program. Uh, where do those three things stand in, in in North Carolina's eyes? Well, you know, I think you know more and more the the university is kind of getting past the uh, the AFM issue. I mean, it's been determined the NCA is not, you know, further investigating UNC. It's been kind of dredged up in the local papers. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's been mentioned, but you know, it's, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. that's kind of, you know, I think at this point, more fodder for the for the rival fan bases like Duke and NC State. I mean, they're sure. really the ones keeping this stuff up in the air. And but I, from an official standpoint, the university kind of considers it a done deal. Now we've had a recent issue. Um, you know, I mean, in the last week or so, the resignation of a couple of people um, that worked in fundraising at UNC, including the, the mother of former UNC All-American Tyler Hansbro, um, 
his mother, Tammy Hansbrough, and Matt Kupek, who's a former quarterback at UNC and has been one of the university's chief fundraisers for years and years, both resigned um, from, you know, questionable travel expenses. You know, she was going to some of her son Ben Hansbrough's game, Notre Dame game, you know, questions of whether it really had anything to do with UNC fundraising. So that's kind of the latest issue. That probably will not become an NCAA thing. That's really more of an internal issue. I think strictly from the NCAA standpoint, the university kind of feels like they're, you know, the, the past is behind and they're trying as best they can to move forward. Um, you know, it, it's it's just one of the things that you just kind of got to work around. And, and, and it's certainly been a tough thing for the last two years, um, you know, dealing with a lot of the uncertainties and negative recruiting and everything that goes along with a quote-unquote scandal. But I think more and more, you know, the university and the fans are starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. At least this year, you know, they've got the guys on the field that are supposed to be on the field, and they've got a coach that was coached during the springtime. I mean, last year they lost half their defense in 2010. Last year they lose Bush Davis a week before training camp. But at least this year they have everybody. So, I mean, that, right. that's the start in the positive direction. Fantastic. Well, uh, Adam, uh, TarHeelIllustrated.com, uh, he's part of the Rivals.com network. Uh, we can't let you go without a score prediction for today. Um, let, let it. Let me have it. Uh, you know, I'll give Louisville the nod by a field goal. I think that's kind of what uh, Vegas is thinking as well. You know, they're at home. Um, they've been playing well. Um, I, I really like their defense. Um, you know, they, they've shown some, some flashes in the running game. Uh, Carolina is good enough to win, but, you know, they, they showed last week they're still not quite ready to get over the hump, uh, you know, in, in a road environment. So I'll go Louisville 27, UNC 24. Fantastic. Well, this is Adam Powell from uh, TarHeelIllustrated.com, part of the Rivals.com network. We really appreciate you coming on, Adam. Not a problem. You guys have a great day. Enjoy the game. Thank you. You too. Adam Powell, great analysis there. I know, man. All kinds of stuff there. Yeah, that was awesome. That's really what good. we like, where we can just sit back and let them explain it all. Yeah, it's like, man, I can go get some barbecue from yep. from the shack in the back, shack in the back and Walk all that other stuff. Going I'm, in, I'm going in now. I'm going to go in. I can't right. stand it anymore. we got there an hour go. to go. I'm going to go watch them warm up, see if I can get some grub on the inside. These ribs are killing me. There you go. So. <laughs> you have fun, and I'll see you in there, Mark. I'll see you in there. All right, buddy. We'll be right back. Weekend Sports Buzz. Trevor Bacon Kelsey is going to step in if he ever finishes that sandwich. Call us 384-1450. We'll be right back.
You're listening to the Weekend Sports Buzz, Saturdays 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and Sundays 10 a.m. to noon. Tell us your thoughts on the Old Catchmore Fort Lincoln Buzz Line at 384-1450. We're back here live outside of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. The Weekend Sports Buzz getting you here to the 3 o'clock hour. we got about 27 minutes or so. Give us a shout. Oxmoor, Fort Lincoln, Buzz Line, 384-1450. We'd love to hear from some card fans, get some predictions out there. Everybody's rolling in. I brought Mark's out. He's in the stadium. Luckily, I brought my man Trevor Bacon Kelsey in for the final 30. I'm excited, Bacon. Coming in like Jeff Reardon with my beard for the save. There to finish go. up the job. you got to do it. We'll roll, roll to Chapman, left-handed smoke coming what, what do you do if you're a North Carolina fan and, and someone who follows your club religiously – like Adam Powell did a great job in the segment before uh-huh. me, even tells you that you're not going to win the game. Well, I, At what point do you just say, okay, you're right, screw it? Well, I'm a Kentucky fan, Bacon, and I put Louisville winning. That's true. And Kentucky usually is going it's to like, lose anyway. I, it's the word I like to call, it's called realistic expectations. And, uh, You've got to have hope, there. though. You've got to have at least some hope. Uh, he does have hope. He, he heard him. He even said if they could do the ground-and-pound game, 100, 100 or so over that, they, he feels confident. He, he only gave you a three-point swing at the line. That's true, true. He was a little nicer on that. But I, we, I talked to Chad Bishop from the uh, Bowling Green Daily News earlier this week. I follows West Kentucky, and he – Picked Western to beat Kentucky. He didn't. He didn't show realism. He showed. Fan, he showed. No, the he fan showed realism. The, the Kentucky's bacon. Kentucky's coming into tonight. His game. Remembering those comments from. Uh, they the, supposed to be SEC. They, they supposed to Andrew be Andrew Jackson. Well, guess what, Andrew Jackson? You're going to realize what the SEC is about today when the air raid comes in full effect. When we go for uh, you know about 42. Don't points. get too cocky. Western's I'm defense not. is solid. It's. Not, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it is going to be what you'll see against Florida next week. Or what you've probably even already seen against Louisville in week one. Duh. But it's a solid defense still, especially for some belt level. I mean, I know it's 35 to nothing, but Alabama, when you go into Alabama and get paid a million dollars to lose 35 nothing, just bad. losing by 35 points That's is, a is respectable. Victory. Now, and supposedly Taggart was not happy even with that loss. He had wanted a win, even though he'd already said Don't Alabama was. Even though he already said Alabama was better than three NFL teams, he still was upset that the team didn't win the game. What NFL teams is he talking about there? We're big NFL guys, Bacon. Uh, is, Se- uh, is Seattle? I'm a, I'm a, no, Seattle. St. Louis? Arizona's probably on the list. Uh, I would say Indianapolis maybe. Yeah, yeah, Indianapolis. Even though Andrew Luck was just a – Maybe uh, Tampa Bay. They're awful. Though. Tampa Bay. Yeah, Tampa Bay's not Who too knows? bad. They, they actually beat Carolina this Bama's week. Bama's good. Bama's really good. So 35-0. And like Mark said – They've only lost three of the last ten games. Uh, two of the last ten lo- uh, games, they've lost two of them. And that's been to Bama and LSU. That's your defending champion and your national champion runner-up. And, and I know Not your bad. memory is, it doesn't serve you well at times, and neither does mine, especially on days like today. Uh-huh. But you, if you remember last year, a 14-3 Kentucky win, West, Western had many opportunities to put touchdowns on the board. That's a stupid setup, Bacon. The, how is that a stupid setup? You, you first game on the road, home game on the road in it was Nashville. In Nashville. That's not a home game. It, they counted it a home Get game. Get an atlas. Bowling Green is not Nashville. I know this, but what I'm telling you is. Don't you have GPS on your phone, damn it? I don't. I don't afford the package. No, but seriously. Last year's game is it, it, just a terrible setup. You're coming in, this is Kawan a one game. over through wide open tight end Doyle. Numerous times that we could set up touchdowns. They settled, end up being in the red zone three times, settled for one field goal out of it. Awesome. You've got, if you're Kentucky, you've got to sw- Obviously, last year you were lucky to get out of it. You do not want to put yourself in that situation. Last this year's year offense Because for- Western is a better team than they were last year. They so returned we. almost everybody. The offense this year compared to last year is, uh, it's, a, it's like we put a whole new roster out now, there. Now, Bobby Rainey's not back. Let's keep that, that in mind. He, is, he didn't do much last year, if I'm correct, though. Regardless. He was held somewhat in check, but he did, he is, he did run for over almost 2,000 yards last year for it Western. 384 The Oxmoor, Fort Lincoln. Buzz line, give us a shout. We're out here outside Papa John's car saving Duke and Ryan's in the building, sipping on some beverages. I want to thank Shaq in the back for I, I just got a pulled pork sandwich over there. I've been drinking some lemonade from the excellent 
Excellent. Dude, excellent service over there. These ladies are deserve a hand. If you, you, they deserve a standing ovation in my in my opinion. Bacon's hungry still. He's going to get hungry. at least three more sandwiches. Uh, I'm not for sure. And of course, Stewart's Pawn Shop out here getting it done for us as well, selling some great card gear. I will not be stopping by the tent, but uh, plenty of cards fans have been coming by. It's packed out here. Bacon. I'm jealous on the card gear because I do want to get something, but I can't wear it in as representative media. That is That's, true. That is, that is the downfall now, of having no, the media. No, you can. Pass. Jonesy, two weeks ago, he wore Kentucky gear in. He wasn't shy about it. So why? Bacon you have spent time in our media room up here. In probably, it's a beautiful view. But it is like a funeral in there. There is no you, somebody sneezes and everybody just looks around like who did that? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Dugan Ryan here, Bacon. Are you Dugan Ryan, how are you, you doing, Dugan are Ryan? You seriously, worried about what other people think? <laughs> I am dressed. I am dressed up today. Day. September fifteenth. I busted out. If, if you can picture me, Bacon and, and is worried about what other people think. I, I bust. I wore the the somewhat nice cargo shorts today. I was the, somewhat nice, <laughs> somewhat nice. <laughs> just a stain or two here or there. <laughs> Those are permanent, unfortunately, because I did do laundry. I'm wearing a clean shirt. I clean. wouldn't call it a clean collar. shirt with a bacon, uh, barbecue hanging well, out of the collar. Was, Your cleanest, <laughs> dirty shirt at a minimum. <laughs> it was clean until I got a hold of the shack in the back sandwich. Uh, now, now it's got some barbecue all over it. It was but well worth it. Though. It was well worth, aroma. well worth it. Duke, we got you over here now. Uh, you're, you're you're a diehard, ride a die card fan. Unfortunately, <laughs> what are your th- you know, what, what's the score? Unfortunately, what is Unfortunately, this? yeah, this guy a mini Mason over here, <laughs> <laughs> passive aggressive. You don't, you don't talk to me like that. You don't ever <laughs> you fall off like Mason's left hip or something. You got Mason, a fake Mason, <laughs> Mason and a mini Mason. <laughs> Mason is at, at most five foot. He fell off my left. Hip. <laughs> Mason, when Mason was your age, he was thin and had a real a lot of hair up here, real short like you. Now he's short and fat with no hair, <laughs> unlike me. Uh, anyways, Look into your future, Tyler. Look into your future, buddy. <laughs> now, if, if, if my that's future, where you're headed. If my future consists of me falling back in a three-step drop to pass to my kid in a parking lot and a face plant, hey, I'm not going to be It was a sniper attack, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was good enough to get Morgan Newton a starting job all last year at UK. Okay? He, he, he actually, if you remember right, Bacon, he did not. Dugan. <laughs> I got to give it to Mason, though. Until the fall, he looked pretty good. Yeah. He was faking left, rolling right. Bam. Anyway, Going Tyler. in. All right. It's the fans walking fans. through here. Fans walking through here. Right, we've talked enough about how the toppers are going to be Kentucky. We already know that's it. Well, another Western man with me also is the yes, you know, yeah. T.O.P. Yeah. Right? That's stand right. Stand up and cheer. Sing it. Up over dear old you don't know it. Sing I have it. no clue what he's saying. <laughs> didn't you, you both went Western. <laughs> to the he graduated. Game. I only did two and a half you years. You didn't graduate? Oh. Yeah, they don't teach you the song until after your third guessed. year. I had to bring my diploma in and hang it on the wall before anybody would believe that I graduated. <laughs> Come on, dude. It's Western. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. can get that I diploma get out online. Of <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Bacon. I mean, Bacon. You kind of look like Bacon. Dugan. Today's oh, no. game. <laughs> can, 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 can I get a score of today's game? Maybe a little prediction. Are you excited about what? Are you going in today? Yes. I say 28-14 cards. Look at this. Everybody's on the same number as you. Everybody heard me predict 27-14 earlier, and it's, it's, it's a trend. It's like disco. It catches fire. I'm glad I got my glasses on because we got great scenery out here today, guys. Just letting you know this. Yeah, uh, it's a great crowd out. John's. It's great. We, we had fun o- baking over at the Penn Station East Coast Subs. Dugan, you should have been there. Did, did you know. get to listen? To, uh, uh, I did listen. Oh, yeah. did you hear Jeremy us? was representing the SAEs, <laughs> right? Jeremy had a, a mafia of crowd. They pulled up a, uh, a pickup truck next to it. Now, was Jeremy on the, the one that would finish first? Jeremy is the quiet the assassin. assassin. The silent assassin. Yes, sir. The silent assassin who finished first at the fraternity party we had out there. And the Sigma knew the uh, ch- uh, chunkier guy. that I, like, I got a kick out of him because at the preliminaries, he uh, ate leftovers as he was yes. doing his interview. <laughs> he he I'm was like, he was I got way my money on you for the big. big I had crowd. trouble seeing him because he was at the end, and I got engulfed in a crowd of fraternity kids. It's not an experience you really want to go Max, through. If I'm correct, like old school, old school. Yes, I mean, and I couldn't get over to Max. Frank the Tank. I tell you what, Max is doing. Max was struggling. I <laughs> he could was. hear. I could hear every bite, and then he took a bottle of water and said, "You know these six subs? I'm drenching them." I drenched all. He drenched all subs. Him and uh, my boy. Oh, he broke out the drenching strategy. He did. It the, the best character was represented by the Pikes. That's Hunter, who literally looked like the illegitimate child of Hunter Cantwell. I mean, red hair, did, red eyebrows. He? It was really kind of creepy to me. But he, he came in drunk. I was giving him crap the whole time. And he ended up becoming in second. He ended up coming out strong. I guess that uh, the Easton from all the alcohol was absorbing now, the beer. So I will guarantee you that I would have won that contest. I would have stuffed at least nine to ten in. I know with the winner at eight. I guarantee you I would have won. I'm tempted to eat about seven more of the uh, pork sandwiches. Maybe we here. should have an eat off the silent assassin versus Tyler I the would Liar. I that. Tyler the Liar. The Cincinnati game on Friday night. You've never heard that, have you? Is that your new nickname? I, he, Dugan loves it. Dugan Tyler loves the Liar. What's that from, Dugan? 
Matt Jones nicknamed him that because he uh, they were hazing Matt for not tipping at furlong. He didn't tip me. <laughs> uh, he didn't tip us. You know, he's a tipper, the great tipper he is. He didn't tip us. I know. Matt, you, I know Matt's you're defense, Jones. he thought it was a. St- yeah, we know you're out there. <laughs> you know you're out there. Jones. We're not backing down. He was at a station event and he thought other people were going to take care exactly. of. Exactly. Uh, I guarantee you, Matt would tip uh, the uh, the nice ladies at the uh, shack in the back over here. Bacon for here, tipped though. him five bucks already. I just I just gave her a twenty and said thank you. Bacon said here's away. a twenty. <laughs> Yeah, he you did. high roller, you. <laughs> what he did, Dugan, he gave her that 20. That was a 10, actually. Knowing yeah. that he would have at least three to four more sandwiches in advance, he doesn't yeah. have to pay. I- I've got a tab going now. <laughs> Let's get to our break. We're going to come back for one more segment outside of Papa John's. Uh, Stewart's Pawn Shop out here, Shack in the Back Barbecue, feeding everybody. Me and Bacon are going to dominate this. Give us a shout, 384-1450. This is the Weekend Sports Buzz. <laughs> what are they trying to throw you out? <laughs> it's in the visor. Global fan. <laughs> they could have at least been cold. Or I got I got two hot ones. I got You'd okay. like a cold one, wouldn't you, Clark? <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Weekend Sports Buzz. Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and Sundays, 10 a.m. to noon. Tell us your thoughts on the Oxmoor Fort Lincoln Buzz Line at 384 1450. Final segment of the weekend, Sports Buzz, taking over, 1450 AM. Check what us out. What was that music you all were playing? I don't know. We, I haven't heard any Adam music today, I, I, honestly. Adam Stewart? Adam, our intern, has thrown together oh. some punk mixes, obviously. We've got to have a talk with Adam. We that's do. Not, that's Adam does great stuff. You lay off my... the opposite of cool. That's You uncool. don't talk to my intern without my permission, all right? So just stay <laughs> off. Right, my bad. It's all right. Uh, Shack in the back barbecue, serving us up some great pulled pork, pulled chicken, Rib, ribs, everything. I got some pickles out there. I see pickles. Tasty uh, lemonade. Tasty lemonade. And, of course, Stewart's Pawn Shop. Enjoying the shade. Enjoying this, uh, the day out here. A lot of people coming by and checking us out. UK, uh, UK Louisville gear sandals. Uh, a little hard uh, worker's hard helmet. Toboggan nice hat, hats, shirts. Some t-shirts. Yeah. A nice little shirts. selection. Anything your heart desires. I don't desires. know if they have a 4X for you, Bacon. Now we can get two. We can just get two extra larges and glue them together. Why don't we? I bet we could fit you in a medium. You'd look really good in one of those. Me in a like medium. Put some uh, affliction on the back of it. You would look great. Have another drink, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. I think so. My man. I haven't right. worn a medium since about eight month old. I don't think. Eight month old. Uh, three eight four fourteen fifty. Give us a shout in the final segment here. Get your predictions in. Of course, Trevor Bacon Kelsey is joining me for the final few minutes here. Myself, Tyler Boyd. Uh, 
Jim Calhoun, I wanted to mention this to you. We're, we're big college yep. basketball guys. Jim Calhoun retired a couple of days ago uh, about time. A year too, a year too <laughs> late, really. Nice. Uh, he should have did it after his championship. Real honestly, I mean that's what most smart people do. That, but he is a cheater. So you know he is retired. What are your thoughts about this, Bacon? Well, this is about time he got his old ass off the bench. <laughs> hey, apparently, I don't like him. He he loves taking shots at UK for no apparent reason. Jim Calhoun, like him or hate him, whatever you want to think about him, he's a great coach. He did what he, what he did at UConn is just amazing. I mean that was a program. I'm going to show my age here slightly to you young people, but, I mean, if you don't remember UConn, a lot of people don't. If you remember UConn before Jam Calhoun, like your, your host Mark said Who earlier. Who was the coach? You, you, re- you remember Notre Dame being relevant. That's how, that's <laughs> yeah, how bad. I, I, I don't remember that. Uh, it was Bill something. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his last name. He was there for about 10 years before Calhoun got there. Calhoun was very successful at Northeastern, though. Also the Huskies. At last coach, uh, Reggie Lewis. Do you remember that name? I do remember that name. player who uh, played for the Boston Celtics before tragically passing away in the early 90s. Played high school by ball with Muggsy Bogues, like Rainbow along with my casual, ADD. Casual Muggsy shout out. I like exactly. the Muggsy shout out. But back to Jim Calhoun. I, I mean, just within a blink of an eye, gets to UConn, turns that team around. He's battling. I mean, that that was a program that probably maybe would have made an extra Final Four or two if it wouldn't. They ran into a lot of Duke, the Duke three straight years in the Elite Eight, two in the Elite Eight, one in Sweet Sixteen. That late in their teams and so on and so forth. So they, they never could really get past that hump, and finally gets three national championships. And it's weird because. As I was watching the press conference, I started thinking about it, and they, they mentioned that you know his last game, despite his great career, he goes out on a loss against Iowa State in the NCAA tournament, and it kind of clicked in my head. I was at that game, so I kind of got to, I started thinking how cool it was to, to myself that I got to witness the last game coached by a, a current Hall of Famer and one of the greatest you know coaches in college basketball. His last game, I was sitting behind Iowa State's bench. That's where cute. Fred Hoiberg was, <laughs> bite me. That? <laughs> <laughs> That's my response to that, okay? <laughs> but I think it was a cool thing. Now, I mean, you don't embrace the uh, history like I do of sports. Did you give him a little ass smack? I did. I gave him a hug, you know, a little little pinch for good luck, and, and, <laughs> and we went on our way. I, you know, we both enjoyed the mini bar at the, at the Hyatt. But uh, it, it was a cool thing to think about. I, I, I am, I'm different from you in that way. I'm a big historian in basketball. I, I love just the, the talk of old. This was probably like I, would, I should like Notre Dame, but I don't. When your history goes back an extra 12, 15 yeah, years. Yeah, I, 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 I love embracing, especially the 80s and the 70s. And I remember watching Jim Calhoun as I was just getting into basketball, you know, at age 8, 9, and 10, when I just uh, discovered I something that wasn't a, true a sport that wasn't wrestling. That's when I first started really getting in the late 80s. So. It's kind of it's kind of weird to see somebody else coaching. I, I mean, it makes you feel old too when you see Kevin Ollie taking over. Yeah, I remember Kevin Ollie playing at UConn. I remember watching Kevin Ollie playing in the NBA. Will he be successful? That's my next question for you. Uh, it, it's all down to recruiting. You've got, I mean, stores is not a place that's really going to sell itself. No, I mean, no. and there, there's, but there's, that doesn't mean it can't be sold. That Jim Calhoun did it for many years. He did it by getting good talent as well. It wasn't just finding you know Butler like uh, diamonds in the rough. It was. He was getting top recruits at one point, it, it, very early into his tenure there in the early nineties. Yeah. So uh, it, it's not like I said; it's not a place that's going to sell itself. You've got to sell it, and hopefully, Kevin Ollie, he's got a love for that university because he spent four years there, because he's been on the coaching staff there. He, to hopefully, he'd be able to sell it and keep it afloat. Yeah. Uh, only thing uh, Connecticut has going for him generally is that four-letter network up in Bristol, uh, well, and they're, they're second to their basketball, their women's basketball team. That's I mean, it, it, it's bad enough. I mean, you look at Tennessee. If Tennessee fans are listening right now driving around here a few of them that might be out good team know how it is to be in the shadow of a, a men's basketball team in the shadow of your women's team it doesn't it's not I it's a very rare know. case across I, the country right, that's two of them can correct me if I'm wrong but steeplechase is number one around these parts <laughs> yes steeplechase the, 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 the championship national champion steeplechase bull cardinals uh, no, for, for real, uh, yeah uh, jim calhoun great coach a guy who i didn't like i'm glad he's gone get the hell out uh I've got I got to witness him as, as a fan uh, at least three times and I, as a member of the media twice. So it was kind of cool and, and being a, it was like when I met Bobby Crimmins last year when uh, when Louisville played um, Charlestown uh, Charleston when they came to town. It was kind of a cool thing because I grew up watching Bobby Crimmins yeah. with, with uh, Lethal Weapon three in the early nineties at Georgia Tech. Lethal so it's kind Weapon of a league. that's it was before the actual movie came out. That was, so I, they stole I'll give it. I'll give you twenty dollars if you can name the three members of Lethal Weapon three on the nineteen ninety Final Jackie Four Georgia Chan. Tech team. Is that Jackie right? Chan, was not. <laughs> Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker. Uh, no, I, I have no idea. It was Dennis Scott, Brian Oliver, and Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson. I there's would not have got anywhere close to those. And there's your lesson of the day, people from the Wizard Bacon himself. The Baconator. This, I am the son of Baconator. That's a bacon bit for the day. This is the Baconator, Trevor Bacon Kelsey. I am the son of Baconator, Tyler Boyd. Stick with you for Tyler a few more minutes. Tyler Liar. Uh, some scores across the nation here. Some early games. 
Pittsburgh 28, Virginia Tech 17 in the fourth quarter currently. Uh, Say it again. Pittsburgh is leading Virginia Tech bacon. That was 17 in the fourth. Tell you that Virginia Tech was a 10 point favorite going to the game. We I know none of us gamble and we don't we just gamble. We gamble when we go out of bed, get out of bed every morning, I guess, but we don't gamble online and Virginia Tech was a 10 point favorite in that game and we talked about that on the freak show on Friday. That was a game that was just looked like a trap waiting to happen for anybody who wants to think oh, Pittsburgh, you know, like crap against Cincinnati. They're crap. Pittsburgh like crap against Youngstown State. They're Virginia crap. Tech Looks solid in their win against Georgia Tech. Ten points. This is a lock bet. I'm throwing. I'm throwing. throwing Matt McCarthy now. put the mortgage payment on it. <laughs> you know, so he he's over here getting sweating right now. The wife and kid are line. literally under the t- bus here. They don't even know about it. They're currently <laughs> using our minibus to move out. A guy, a uh, team, uh, North Carolina, very familiar with, who just got beat by Wake Forest last week. Uh, last week in a final drive, they are getting blasted on by Florida State. Baby. No shock. Forty-five to zero. Currently in the fourth quarter. Wake Forest awful. Correlation, North Carolina, you're awful. Florida State showing they, they they are not a fluke. They blew out two uh, scrub teams in the first two weeks. EJ Manuel is looking like finally it took four years, but the the uh, godlike icon he got it coming in as a freshman is finally paying off. Yeah, no, another one more top twenty five game. Ohio State leads Cal twenty fourteen late in the fourth. TCU former Big East that was in there for about forty eight hours uh, twenty to six over Kansas. I said that before. Did you? <laughs> really? I said I've been in something about 48 hours. Oh God, I feel sorry. <laughs> I feel sorry for that guy. Uh, <laughs> if we can sports buzz, uh, give us a shout. Seriously, three eight four fourteen fifty. You got a few minutes left. Ending it on the game, bacon. I know you. Uh, you gave the prediction earlier. 20, uh, 27, 14. 27, 14. 27, 14. If Car- if Louisville comes out and struggles in the first quarter, could this? Could that be a sign? Because last week, if you think about it, when they were playing Missouri State, it was a slow start. You don't need it that was, tonight, but right? it's a slow start by the, by what they want to do. They controlled that pace. That's what Charlie Strong. Charlie Strong's not going to really put his hands on the, the offense very much. It's in Sean Watson's hands, and he's done a really good job. Maybe you could say he's playing, keeping his cards close to his chest because it was Missouri State and didn't want to show kind of some of the trick stuff and open up the offense just yet. That's understandable. And but on the other hand, this offense, and even though Charlie Strong doesn't touch the offense as much, he does influence the fact that he wants to keep it a ball control offense, run the ball. Keep it close to the vest, as I mentioned, kind of like a Jim Trestle style, Jeff Fisher earlier. He and when you do that, you, you're going to have close games, and you can be prone to upsets that way. And you saw it last week, last year against this North Carolina team, where Louisville really had trouble opening up the offense when even when they tried to, and the game ended up being 14-7, and that was only because Louisville scored a touchdown with with like two minutes left in the game, and yeah. it, it, it was really completely irrelevant anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting pretty good performance out of the Cards. Like I said, I have seen. Uh, North Carolina play, and, you know, I, I, not in person. I did watch him on the ESPN of three. Thank you for uh, uh, Xbox Live for having that for me. Crucial last week for the. No, nah, don't give them a plug. They don't sponsor with us. That is very correct, but I had to because they sponsored me last week. Uh, the, the game, though, you know, I, I, I do expect. <laughs> They're right, Dugan. You don't pay us no money. You don't get talked about, That's right? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Dugan Ryan, the owner of 1450, is in here with his box of uh, adult Bi- beverages. Bi- box of fun. Box of <laughs> box of fun. We're all getting prepared to go in here. I'm excited. Actually but using his stylish 1450, the sports buzz koozie, I might add. It is the game bacon. If you're not, if you can't get out here, if you're not, no <laughs> tickets. You can tune in on ABC. It is going to be nationally televised, if I'm correct. Who's so, calling the game? Do you know? I do not know. They should have hired me. Because I'm a great broadcaster. Yeah, yeah, they've done excellent. <laughs> You should go to the media room and find out. <laughs> you got the pass. I want to know who's broadcasting. Door? Excuse in me. Hi, I'm with 1450 The Sports Buzz. I'm bacon. Yeah, we're a radio station. <laughs> Can I, I would just like to know who's broadcasting the game today. I'm bacon. I am with and 1450. If so, if so, would you like to hang out afterwards? <laughs> we've got a we've got a little mini bus down over across the way. <laughs> I know you're from out of town, but you ever ridden on a short bus? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. I love it. We should do uh, us three should do shows more often. I kind of uh, enjoy this. Oh yes, it's good times. Good times. Good times, and getting ready for a cards win. Hopefully, uh, cards win. Shaq in the back. We appreciate them coming out here and uh, entertaining the crowd, feeding the crowd. Uh, Stewart's pawn shop. Dugan got all that hooked up. It's great. It's fun out here. Every home game. I know. If I'm correct, Bacon, I don't know the schedule off the top of my head. Uh, Louisville is on the road and uh, by the next three weeks. Yeah, the, starting with next week, you obviously got Florida International going down to uh-oh, Orlando. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, Ford International, hold, we know what happened last year. Hold, yes, that was. Unfor- Luckily for Louisville fans, Wyatt Tilton is not back with them, who basically beat Louisville on his own last year. 
with three touchdown passes off. Sixty, I think all of them were forty-five or plus, if I'm not mistaken. The big time. Yeah, exactly. He's now with the Indianapolis Colts doing nothing. If you haven't been a fantasy team, <laughs> but if you're in a keeper league, you might want to hang on to him if you got him late enough. Anyway. Uh, the coach that I'm drawing a blank on his name. I, try, I drew a blank on his name earlier too, but I know he does a really good job. He was he was looked at by some other schools down at international, but he stayed there. So I I trust that he's probably got some decent talent. They I think are zero and two if I'm not mistaken, and got blown out by somebody a, a biggie a, a, a BCS conference school last week. So maybe they're not as talented without the with the wide receiver why Tilton there as I thought they could be. But still, when you go on the road, you're a young Louisville team. You, you, it, you just have to be weary anyway. You still don't don't be overconfident because you go into any place like that overconfident, you can become out upset. And Louisville saw that last year when they came in overconfident against Marshall after the UK win. And FIU, uh, yeah, and FIU. Thank I, you. I, I expect a whole you. a whole different. <laughs> you're welcome. I expect a whole different <laughs> uh, output though to the season for the Cardinals throughout. Thank here. you for reminding me of pains in my past. I, I like to uh, remind you. Would you like to remind me how to take my cousin? To I was going to remind too. you. You did wake up this morning. I know that's a pain <laughs> to you as well. So, uh, anyways. It's been a fun day out here. The, the weekend golf guys starting us off this morning, followed by me and Bacon out with inside the press box for the Penn Station East Coast. That was Cubs. a blast. I, I, blast. I was worn. I was more tired, I think, than the guys eating the sandwiches, which is sad. I really thought you were going to pass out on I'm it. really out of shape, guys. Dude, you need to get a health plan on the station. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We need to get Bacon. Yeah, we, need, we need to call LAC and we get We need to get Montreal Jones them. over here to get Bacon's uh, in shape, out of shape, or whatever you want to call it. Bacon. Montrell Jones is going to get Handsome Jimmy and Trevor Kelsey <laughs> in the boot camp. That would be He'll be out there spinning tires. He has kids running up this hill over here, this mountain of a hill straight up. I got worn out driving up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> There's no air conditioning in the bus. I was tired. Handsome Jimmy and Bacon going to race up the hill. Who wins? Who I do- got Bacon. Who doesn't I die first? My money's on Handsome Jimmy. <laughs> it's good. We should do my this. money's on Handsome Jimmy. I love the faith I have in everybody here. I got your back, Bacon. Thank Anyways, you. Thank you, Tyler. Bacon. Yeah, <laughs> that's so late. <laughs> that's a great point. That's a good. That's a good way though, because I get there late. By the time I get there, uh, handsome already passed out halfway through. <laughs> then you just walk through. I just walk. Uh, thanks everybody for sticking with us. Uh, Bacon, you filled in greatly today. Tomorrow, myself with Kelly Patrick taking ten to twelve. Uh, go cats, go cards. This is the weekend sports buzz. <laughs>